Belinda the Beetle. Chapter 1 Snoop by Name Mr. William Whisker finished his breakfast and came down to open the showroom. He pushed up the shutters and unlocked the door. Then in the morning light, he looked at his cars. There were Maisie the Minx, Jackie the Jaguar and Susie the Snipe. He went to each and stroked their gleaming paint. He thought how much he loved them and how he hated having to sell them. He sometimes talked about it to his wife. Mrs Whisker was a large woman with no sentiment. I don't like parting with them and that's a fact, he would say. How would I know they're going to good homes? Rubbish, William, Mrs Whisker would answer. If you don't sell your cars, what will you do for bread and butter? Poor Mr Whisker had no answer to that. He was very fond of bread and butter. He had it for his breakfast and supper and tea. He even had it sometimes for elevenses. He looked at his cars and wondered which of them would have to go today. Jackie's spoken for, and so is Maisie, and someone came in to look at Susie yesterday. One good thing, he thought, I shan't lose Belinda. No one will want to buy her and he went over to the corner where she stood and stroked her lovingly. Belinda was a little Volkswagen Beetle with a soft top. She was painted red, and her number was BLN111. Mr Whisker was fond of Belinda. He was sorry for her too. She had had an accident with a lorry, and had never been in the same car since. Another garage had tried to mend her, but she would never go properly. Her master soon got tired of trying to make her start. He bought a new car for Mr Whisker and gave him Belinda in part of exchange. Mr Whisker talked to Belinda. He coaxed Belinda. He took off his coat and did all sorts of things to her engine, which was at the back end. Belinda liked Mr Whisker and tried hard to please him, but she didn't feel well, and no matter how much she tried, her engine kept stopping. Phew, said Mr Whisker at last, and wiped his face with a large spotted handkerchief. I'm hot. It's no good, Belinda, I can't put you right. We'll have to see what George can do. Come along. He pushed her through the door into the back of the shop to the shed where George Egg worked. George Egg was one of the friendliest men you could meet. Everyone called him George, even the local children. He was a large round man with a red smiling face. At least, his face was always red and smiling when he came to work in the morning. But though he was still smiling, it was generally black with oil by the time he went home. George loved cars and his shed was a kind of car hospital. When anyone had a car that was out of order, they brought it to George, and George put it right. He would open the bonnet and look inside. He would take parts out and put them back again, and lo and behold, the car was as good as new. People would say that George did it by magic, but George only laughed. <laughs> it's quite simple, he would tell them, when you know what to do. It's knowing what to do that counts. William Whisker pushed Belinda over to George. He hoped that George would know what to do with her. George took Belinda's engine to pieces. Belinda didn't like that. She was afraid that George might lose some of her parts. What would become of me then? she thought sadly. But George was very gentle with her. It's all right, my pretty, he said reassuringly. I shan't lose any of your parts. We'll clean them and mend them and put them back again and then you'll be as good as new. George couldn't work on Belinda all the time because people kept bringing cars for him to mend, but he was very careful of Belinda's parts. 
He wedged a tray on top of her engine and put her parts tidily on the tray. He wrote a notice in large letters, Please do not touch. Thank you, George, said Belinda. This is nice. They won't get lost now. Presently, a man brought an old car in for George to mend. Belinda saw George open its bonnet and look inside. That won't take long, he said cheerfully. I'll wait, said the man whose name was Mr Snoop. He started looking round the shed. Belinda watched him. He had thick eyebrows, a sharp face and wore a hat. A cigarette drooped from his mouth. Belinda didn't like the look of him at all. I hope he doesn't come near me, she said. But that's just what Mr Snoop did. He walked all around the shed with his hands in his pockets, staring at the other cars. And last of all, he came to Belinda. He looked at Belinda. He made Belinda feel creepy. He waited till George wasn't looking. He opened Belinda's door and poked around inside. He prodded her cushions. Oh, shuddered Belinda, this is dreadful. Mr. Snoop went round to the back and saw Belinda's parts neatly arranged on her tray. Her engine lid was held up by a metal prop. George had not fastened it firmly. Mr. Snoop made sure that George wasn't looking and poked his head under Belinda's engine lid. Ash from his cigarette fell all over. What a cheek, thought Belinda crossly. I'll pay him out. Mr. Snoop picked up one of her parts. Don't touch, said Belinda. She gave a little jerk, the prop fell away, and her engine lid fell down, clang on Mr. Snoop's head. I've got you, chuckled Belinda. Serves you right. Just you wait till George comes. George heard the clang and saw Snoop caught in Belinda's engine lid. Here, you come out of that, he shouted. Snoop lifted Belinda's engine lid and turned to face George. George's face was red, but he wasn't smiling. He was very cross. There's a notice saying don't touch. Can't you read? I wasn't doing any harm, mister, said Snoop. I'm just having a look round. George lifted the engine lid. Belinda's parts were disarranged, they were covered in cigarette ash, the tool bag was open, and the tools all over the tray. Take your car and go, he ordered. Snoop by name and Snoop by nature. We don't want you to snort round here. Snoop slouched to his car and drove away. Well done, Belinda, said George. You caught him nicely. He'd have taken some of your parts, I shouldn't wonder, and put them in his old car. What a horrible man, said Belinda, shuddering. Never mind, Belinda, he's gone. Now we'll put you right. He cleaned Belinda's parts all over again and put them back in her inside. Thank you, George. That's better, she said comfortably. George started her engine and she hummed him a little song. Mr Whisker came in. I'm better now, she sang happily. George stood listening with his head on one side. She's better, William, he said, but she's not right yet. I'll leave her running for a little while just to get her warmed up. Then I'll take her out. Would you like that, Belinda? Yes, please, George, she answered. George tidied up. Then he squeezed into the driving seat. Come on, Belinda, let's go. And away they went. They had a nice run through the town and back again. But neither Belinda nor George noticed Mr Snoop draw back into the doorway in the high street as they passed. He was talking to a man in a brown suit.